Hey everyone, welcome. This is Nicholas from Growth Marketer. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at why you should clean your email list. And I'll cover the tools and the process involved. And then we'll go step by step as you watch what I do every single step of the way to clean and validate an email list. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the first question is, why should you clean your email list? Well, there's a lot of really good reasons, but I think there's three that we should focus in on. Number one, you should stop paying for invalid subscribers because most email service providers like ActiveCampaign or uh, whatever you may be using, MailChimp, they're only going to charge you for your active subscribers. So if someone is unsubscribed from a list, or either by their own choice or if they were unsubscribed because that contact's invalid, maybe it bounced, you're usually not going to have to pay for that contact. So this is a great way to get more value out of the email marketing tools that you may already be paying for. The second reason is that it's going to improve your deliverability and your engagement. Every time you send an email, the inbox providers, so Google, Gmail, Outlook, Hotmail, all these different providers, they are receiving that message and then they're making decisions based on it and they're trying to determine your sender reputation, the IP reputation, there's a whole bunch of different factors that go in to what's called your email deliverability score. And so one of these factors is, are you sending emails to inboxes that don't exist? Or are you sending emails that constantly get back, uh, bounced back? Or are you sending emails that you really shouldn't be sending, right? So this is a way to help clean up that process and improve your email deliverability, which is going to in turn get more of your emails to end up in the primary inbox and then you'll have higher engagement. So that's the overall idea of what we're doing here. And then last but not least, it's going to help you get more realistic email metrics and reporting numbers. So for instance, if we're sending a whole bunch of emails and we're looking at that open rate number and a lot of those emails are invalid or they're bouncing back, then your open rates are going to be affected and they're not a realistic representation of the people who are legitimately on your list, who can open your emails, and so in this way, if you keep your list clean, you have good list hygiene, it's going to help with your email metrics and your reporting. So there's other reasons as well, but I think these are the three that are most important when it comes to email list cleaning. Okay, so in terms of the tools that we're gonna be using in this walkthrough, because I want this to be something that's useful and practical, so I'm not just gonna be talking the whole time, we're actually gonna look at the process in action. The tools that I like to use are Debounce, Google Sheets, and Active Campaign. Now, what I'm gonna be sharing can certainly get applied to any other email platform, and you can use different tools, and the concepts are still the same. So don't feel like you have to use Debounce or Google Sheets, or you know maybe you're not using Active Campaign, maybe you're using uh, ConvertKit or SendFox or MailChimp or any of these other email platforms, but the concepts are gonna be the same. However, if you do wanna follow my exact processes, these are the tools that I use and recommend. So let me go through them real quick. So Debounce is a list cleaning and email validation tool. That's really the focus of what we're gonna be working on today because that's the tool that we're basically sending all these emails to or we're providing these emails because that's the tool that we are using to actually check the validity of these email addresses. Google Sheets is what I like to use just to clean up the data so that when I import the list back to my email platform, it's going to be in a format that is easy to understand. And then ActiveCampaign, of course, is the platform that I use and recommend to send emails at scale. This is a marketing automation platform. I've been working with ActiveCampaign since, I think, 2015. I'm an ActiveCampaign certified consultant, so this is a platform that is near and dear to me. But of course, you can use any platform you want, and the concepts are going to be the same. However, if you are using these tools, then you're going to get a complete play-by-play -play of how you should clean your email list, or at least my approach to it. Okay, digging in a little bit deeper, with Debounce, after you upload the list, and we're gonna go through all of this in just a few minutes, once you upload your list, you're gonna get something back like this. It's going to be a report that's gonna show you how many emails are deliverable, invalid, uh, how many have syntax errors, how many are disposable, accept all, unknown, spam traps, or duplicate. And don't worry, I'm going to break down every single one of these codes or reasons in just a few minutes. After we get that list from Debounce, what we're gonna do is export it and clean it up in Google Sheets. You can use Excel as well. I just like to use Google Sheets because it's easier for me, it's in the cloud, and I just, I'm a Google Sheets fan. Uh, but basically, there's a certain template that I like to follow when it comes to cleaning the data, and you may have a different process, but the idea here is to take all of that validation data from Debounce or whatever tool you're using to validate the emails, put it into a spreadsheet, clean it up, and get it ready to re-upload to your email provider. 
And then that takes us to that third part, your email service provider. In this case, like I said, I use Active Campaign. You're going to re-upload that list and you're going to basically match back the data from Dbounce or whatever email tool you're using to clean your list. And you're going to tell Active Campaign, append each contact record with this additional information either as a tag or as custom fields or both, so that you then know what's the status of each of these contacts in terms of their deliverability. What is the result and what is the reason in terms of whether you can send email to these folks or not. And so that's gonna make a lot more sense once we go through the live demo. I just wanted to give you a 10,000 foot view of exactly what we're gonna be doing. So with that being said, let's jump over to Dbounce. I'll quickly explain what it is if you're not familiar with it and then we'll go step-by-step step through the process. Okay, this is Dbounce. Now, there are a lot of tools out there like there's, there's Never Bounce, there's Zero Bounce, there's so many. Uh, they all kind of have the word bounce in the name. I, I say that jokingly, but I like Dbounce because it's very affordable, it's easy to use, and it has the level of granularity that I'm looking for in terms of the data you're getting back pertaining to what is the result of that email validation and what is the reason for that result being classified in a certain way. That, that's gonna make a lot more sense once we go through this process. But of course, you can use whatever you want. If you do wanna try Dbounce, I will put a link below where you can check it out. It is very affordable and I've used a lot of these other platforms out there. I find that no platform's perfect and some give you better results, but they're very expensive. Others are very cheap, but the results are kinda of spotty. And what I like about Dbounce, is it's a great balance of both the value you're getting because you do have to pay on a credit basis for every email that you're validating, but don't worry, it's it's pretty inexpensive. Um, so you do want to balance out the cost with the quality of the results you're getting. In terms of pricing for Dbounce, it's a credit system. So for instance, the more credits you get, the cheaper it is. So if you buy 5,000 verifications, it is 0.002 cents per verification or $10 for that 5,000. Uh, then it goes all the way up to 5 million verifications where you can pay 1500 and you can see it is quite inexpensive at that cost. So it really depends on how many verifications you need. Of course, I always recommend starting low, test it out. And then if you do plan on incorporating debounce into your regular workflow, then of course you want to buy more credits because you'll be saving some money there. I usually will buy around 100,000 verifications at a time for 90 bucks. And that seems to last for myself and for my clients. Okay, so once you sign up for Dbounce, you'll see this type of dashboard here, and there's a whole bunch of different tools on the side. The one we're gonna be using for this demonstration is called Bulk Verification. So the first step is to upload your list. So we clicked on Bulk Validation, and over here you'll see Upload a List. You wanna use a CSV file. So I'm gonna choose a list that I had prepared for the purposes of this video, and we are going to submit that. And now what Dbounce is gonna do is they're gonna queue it, they're gonna prepare it, and they're gonna give you a quick idea of what's going on here in the background so that you can begin that validation process. Okay, you can see here that Dbounce has finished the upload process and now they're telling us there's 917 records in the CSV file that we can begin the verification process for. And it, this will cost 917 credits, although we have plenty of credits here, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But why don't we go ahead and start the validation process? Okay, so this is where the waiting game begins, where you have to wait until Dbounce finishes the verification process. Obviously, this is gonna take longer for larger lists. With 917 records in this sample that I uploaded, it shouldn't take more than a few minutes, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back once this has finished. Okay, we're back, and so after a little bit of a break, I have the list completely validated here. And so as you can see, the report shows that 88% of the list was considered deliverable. 8% is accept all emails, invalid emails. There's about 25 of those for 3% of the list. And then 1% of this list or 13 emails are unknown. And looks like we have five disposable emails as well. No duplicate emails and no syn syntax errors on this list. So next, and that's gonna make a lot more sense once we go through what all these different codes mean in just a minute. So the next step is to download the report. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. The way that I like, the way that I'm showing you on this video is not the only way, but I like to download the full report. It's gonna download as a CSV file. So just uncheck deliverable only, which is usually what's checked by default and check full report, download it as a CSV. And then what I like to do, and I just did this to save a little time, is I like to then put it into a Google Sheet because that's where I'm more comfortable working with Google Sheets rather than Excel, but you could certainly do the same uh, manipulations that we're gonna be doing to the sheet 
whether you're using Excel or Google Sheets. So I already did that. You can see here, this is the same list that Dbounce has just sent to me. And so you'll see these are the columns that Dbounce adds. They add a results column, reasons column, status code, role, free, and domain. Now, right off the bat, the status code, this is something that Dbounce applies to each of the emails based on the result or the reason. It's just an internal little status code uh, tagging system that they have where deliverable emails are always tagged as five, for instance, except all emails are tagged as four. Uh, I don't really find this very useful. So right off the bat, what I always do is just delete the status code column. So then we're left with the email address, the result, the reason, the role, free or domain. And I've made these columns small so that we are hiding the full email addresses here. Okay, so let's go through each of these columns and I'll explain what they mean. So with the results column, there's going to be four different values here. And these are assigned by Dbounce. And so it's gonna either say safe to send, risky, unknown or invalid. Think of this as the high level category for what the results mean. And then each result can have more context added to it. And that's where reasons come in. So as you can see, reasons are mostly useful for knowing why something is considered invalid because something can say the result is invalid, but then the reason could be one of these four different reasons. It could be invalid because it bounced, invalid because it's a disposable email, invalid because it's a spam trap email, or invalid because there was a syntax error. And I will explain exactly what all of those mean in just a minute. If something says it's safe to send, that just means it's straight up a good email address to send to. If it's risky, usually what that means is that it is an accept all email. And I'll get into that in more detail in one moment. And then if it's unknown, that just means that when Dbounce tried to do the validation, they were not able to complete it for whatever reason. And so that's sort of a gray area. That could be a perfectly fine email or it can be an invalid email, but there's just no way to confirm unless you run this again and again and again at different times and see what results you get. So next, why don't we go into more details with the results code? So like I was saying, safe to send means the emails appear to be okay. Should you send to these folks? Yes, these emails should be perfectly fine to send to. Ideally, all your emails would be safe to send. Then you have risky. And so depending on the reason, you may want to avoid sending to these. Like I said, most cases, this is an accept all email. That means that the domain setup was done in such a way where no matter what you have before the domain, so I could say XYZ123 at example.com and to debounce and to these other verification platforms, that would appear to be a legitimate email because that inbox or that receiving server is accepting all emails on that domain. So that's, that's a maybe. Then you have unknown, and this means the server could not be reached, like I just said. And again, this is also a maybe. And then you have invalid, which means that Dbalance was able to invalidate this email and you should not send to the emails that are listed as invalid. Then if we go one layer deeper and we look at the reasons, this is where it really starts to get interesting and useful. So deliverable, that means that this is verified as a real email address and you should send to it. Accept all means that, like I was saying, this is a domain-wide setting, making it difficult to verify, and maybe you should send to them, and maybe you shouldn't. Then you have unreachable, and this means the email appears to be okay. However, the domain and or the server is not responding to the request. So that's another maybe. And then this is where the reasons are very useful because it's going to give you four different reasons for the invalid emails. And so an email could either be invalid because it was a bounced email, meaning that the address just doesn't exist or it's not accepting mail and it came back as a bounce or it's a disposable email. So you've probably seen these sites where you could sign up for a temporary email. People use these to download lead magnets where they don't want people to continue to email them. It's like a one-time email or like a freebie shared inbox, something like that. So uh, I do not recommend sending to disposable emails. Then you have spam traps. These are very, very important. You do not wanna have spam traps on your list. Just to give you a quick example, I was working with an enterprise client a while back and they were having huge deliverability issues and they had a very old list that they've accumulated over the years in many different ways and they had dozens and dozens of spam trap emails on the list and that was killing their deliverability. It was killing their domain reputation, their IP reputation and so we needed to remove those right away. So what a spam trap email is, it's an email address that is set up specifically by your internet service provider or your inbox provider like Google or Outlook. And it's used to sort of create like a honeypot where if someone gets that email on the list, the only way they could have gotten it on the list means that it had to be a purchased list or they had to do some nefarious things to get that email on the list. 
So you do not want to send to a spam trap email because that's going to kill your deliverability. So you want to definitely remove the spam trap emails right away. And then syntax means that there was some kind of formatting issue with the email. So if the email is spelled wrong or maybe it doesn't have the at symbol in it or something, then you're going to get a syntax error. In the case of Active Campaign, those emails wouldn't even get into Active Campaign as a valid email. So if you're doing this from a list that is already in Active Campaign, you're probably not going to have any syntax errors because for those emails to already be in Active Campaign, they would have already had to pass that sort of very simple syntax test. I hope this is making sense so far. I know we're getting in the weeds here and I just want to share a few more details. So if we go back to this sheet, you'll see the role and the free column. So role means, is this a role-based email? And to show you what that means, let's go back to our slides real quick. Role means that these are emails that are like admin at, ad editor at, sales at, those types of emails that are not for one specific person. And so depending on your list collection methods and the type of audience you have, you may be able to send to these addresses with no problem. The thing you want to avoid is you don't want your list to be predominantly made up of these role-based emails because that does not look good in the eyes of Google and Outlook because it looks like a purchase list if you have a bunch of info ad and admin ad and sales ad email addresses. So you wanna be careful with that. But if this is a 100% opted in list and you haven't purchased the list in any way, then you should be okay if you have some role-based emails in there and I wouldn't try to exclude them. And then similar to that, you have the free column, which basically tells you if the domain that the email is based on is a free domain or not? Is it a free email account? So obviously Gmail, Yahoo, those types of accounts where you could set up an inbox for free, that's gonna give you a yes in the free column. And going back to this chart right here, depending on your list collection methods and the type of audience, you may be perfectly fine sending to free emails. Again, I think it all comes down to how that list was acquired. And if everyone was opting in 100% legitimately, I wouldn't worry too much about free. So all that to say is that this information, the role and the free and the domain is useful, but it's not going to make or break anything. Really what we're most interested in is the result and the reason. Okay, so now that we've gone through the different codes and the different explanations for what the data says, I just need to do a few more things to get this list ready for uploading back to Active Campaign. And so what I like to do is I like to put in a new column here that says last verified on and then what i'll do is put in today's date so today is september 5th let me just format that and i will fill it out all the way to the bottom of the rows okay i finished that process and you'll see why this is going to be helpful in just a minute as we upload this back to active campaign so the next step is to save this list as a csv file because that's what we're going to need as we upload it to active campaign then as we navigate back over to Active Campaign, and again, this will be different depending on your email service provider. I'm just showing you the method if you're using Active Campaign and if you want to follow my method for doing this, then what we want to do is we want to import from file. We want to find that list that is the one that we just exported. So now after that import has finished, what we want to do now is match the data from the CSV file into the contact record fields. Let me do that real quick and then I'll show you what I did. Okay, so here's what I did. I matched the email field to the email field. I matched results to, res to validation result, reason to validation reason, role to role email, free to free email, domain to email domain, and last verified to last validated. Verified or versus validated, I use those terms interchangeably at times, but you'll notice that some of these are custom fields. Now that's a whole nother topic if you need help creating custom fields in Active Campaign, But basically what I did was for some of these, I created custom fields and you can actually see what it looks like in this sheet here. If we go back to the Active Campaign step, you'll see these are the custom fields that I've created, validation result, validation reason, role, free, email domain, and last validated. Then next you want to select the list. This should be the same list that these emails were originally on when you exported them from Active Campaign, And then tags, I like to add one more tag as sort of a global tag that's gonna to go to all these contacts and it simply says status debounce validated so that I can go in and I can search for all the emails in Active Campaign that have been validated. 
And then last but not least, you want to check this little box that says update existing contacts while importing. Now you want to be very careful at this step because if you have any data that is in one of these fields, this process will overwrite that data. So I can't stress this enough. You have to be very careful when you're doing these types of imports. And also the other thing is you want to make sure that you don't have any automation that's going to automatically send to everybody once you do this import process. So usually automations are going to be triggered by someone getting added to a list or a tag. So you want to be very careful with your specific setup. Put some checks in place, put some checks and balances so that you do not automatically send emails to people as you do this. Because really all we want to do is we want their contact records to get updated and we want these fields to get updated with the new values that we're bringing in from debounce but we don't want anything else to happen we don't want these people's subscriber status to change we don't want them to receive an email we don't want them to change the list they're on we don't want other data to get overwritten so you've got to be very careful i can't stress that enough how many mistakes i've made in the early days for not doing this carefully but with that i'm going to go ahead and click the import button and we'll see what happens okay it took a few minutes but the report says that Okay, it's taken a few minutes, but the import is now complete and we can view the report and see what happened. So there were 918 items. We were able to import 892. There were some that were not imported. If you want to go into detail and look at why those were not imported, you can check here. But usually it's because someone had already unsubscribed or there was some type of duplication issue or something like that. So we're not looking for 100% success with this type of process, but for the most part, it looks like we are doing pretty well in terms of the list getting re-uploaded to Active Campaign, And so now ideally what should have happened is we'll have this whole new section of information in those custom contact fields for each contact that we just edited. And it's going to have all of that validation status information. Let me show you a few of them. Okay. So here's one of the contact records for one of the emails we just re-uploaded to Active Campaign. You could see we have the new debounce validated tag added to it just like we wanted to. And then as we scroll down, you're going to see this section here. So I didn't go into too much detail for how I created this. If you have questions about it, let me know. But basically all this is, is this is a group with some new custom contact record fields added to it. And these are the names of the fields. And each of these are text fields, except for the one that says last validated. That's a date field. And you can see here, this is the validation result that was in our spreadsheet. This is the validation reason. Then we could see if it's a role email, yes or no. If it's a free email, yes or no. Uh, what the email domain is, in this case, Gmail, which makes sense because it's a free email. And then this should be the date that you did this validation. So that is today's date. So after all this work, we're pretty much done, except for the very final step, which is how do you then create the right segmentation so that you're only sending to the people you want to be sending to. Because now that this information is in your contact records, that's great. But when it comes time to send a campaign or to put someone in an automation, you want to make sure that you're only going to send to the emails that you want to be sending to. And again, this goes back to the rules that we decided early on, who do we want to send to? And so to make it as simple as possible, I created this simple framework that you can think about. And so there's really three options here, no risk, low risk, or medium risk. So if you want to have no risk and you want to really just do everything perfectly by the book, you should only be sending to the deliverable addresses, the ones that have that deliverable value in the validation reason custom field. However, if you want to take on a little bit of risk, you could also group in the accept all emails. And so just as a quick recap, what an accept all email is, it's a domain wide setting that makes it difficult to validate the legitimacy of that email address, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an invalid email. It just means that it's kind of like an unknown. We don't know for sure if that is a valid email address or not. One thing I've noticed is that if you do have a large B2B audience with a lot of corporate or company domains, you are going to have a lot of accept all email addresses because a lot of these domains are set up where they are accept all. And so for that reason, you don't want to necessarily exclude a large portion of your list unless you're absolutely certain that you need to. So for me personally, I'm okay with a little bit of risk when sending. And so I will usually take option two, which is low risk. I'm going to be sending to deliverable 
and to accept all emails. Then finally you have option three, which is medium risk. And this means you're gonna to send to the deliverable folks, you're gonna to send to the accept all folks and the unreachable, because remember with unreachable, what that means is the email appears to be okay. However, the domain and or the server is not responding to our request. And this is totally up to you if you want to include those in the list of people that you send to or not. Again, it's one of those gray areas where I can't definitively tell you yes or no what the best option here is, but I can give you a few other parameters to keep in mind as you decide what is the level of risk you're comfortable with when deciding who to send to. And so the two notes that I will leave you with here as you try to figure out what is the right option for you is first of all, at a minimum, never, ever, ever send to the ones that come back bounce, disposable, spam trap, or syntax. That I think is a no brainer at this point. I think we're all on the same page there. So really it just comes down to which of these three options do you want to send to? And the other thing to keep in mind is that your risk level is reduced if you're certain that your list is properly opted in and a fresh list. So if you're talking about uh, an email list that you've acquired one by one using lead magnets and very legitimate opt-in methods over the years, and it's a fresh list that you're in contact with, then I think you'd be okay with more risk. So that means sending to the accept alls and the unreachables is not as big of a deal versus if you purchase the list, which I never recommend you do, but I know there's folks out there that do this. And if you're sending to a list that you just don't know where those contacts came from, that's where you should be more strict and maybe go with option one or option two. But that's where you need to make that decision. It comes down to how those people originally got on your list. And so that brings us to the final step where you want to create a segment. And this is going to be the segment you use to actually send to the people that you've just validated using debounce. And so the process is different depending on your email service provider, but for active campaign, you can head over to list. You can click on the list and create a new segment. And so for purposes of this video, I created one called validated emails. They're in my list. That's the list I want to select for this. And then I'm adding an and condition and it says validation reason is deliverable or validation reason is accept all. And so everyone else would not get sent to. And so I can save this list. And then when I'm sending a campaign or doing anything, this is the segment that I want to use. It's called validated emails. And that's going to exclude the folks who either have not been validated yet, or they have one of those other validation reasons. So there you have it. We're finally at the end of this tutorial. It was a lot more involved than I thought it would be. I thought this was going to be a quick and easy video to make, but it took quite a while. So if you got value out of this, please let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel. That means a lot. And also if you have questions, put your questions in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. And one final thing is let me know how you got to this video. I've been sharing a lot of content on TikTok lately. So if you watched this whole video through and you originally came here from TikTok, I'd love to know, or however else you found this video, let me know in the comments section below. I'll have a lot more information on email marketing, marketing automation, growth marketing in the future. So do hit that subscribe button and check out my other content. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.